Callon bringing it forward. Thompson's making the run. Carroll hangs on to it though. Still Davy Carroll. Could go all the way here. <laughs> oh, Hello, I'm Phil Catchpole and welcome to this week's episode of Ringing the Blues, the official Wickham Wanderers podcast. On the show this week, we have all the action and reaction from the very long trip to Carlisle United on Saturday, plus Wickham Wanderers fan Johnny King joins us for Till Death, Us Two Parts. But first, let's head to Mexico City for some chairboy Spanish with Uri. So Wickham Wanderers is having a great momentum. They are flying high in the form table and looking at a top half finish for the season. We will not end in the final eight, but the highest we can achieve is 10th. There are not enough games left to climb to number one. <laughs> okay, so Cherboy Spanish this week, finishing the season with momentum. This one is very easy. How do we say finish in Spanish? Terminar. Finishing, terminando, like terminal. And season, how do we say season? Temporada. Temporada. And momentum, well, it's the same word. So, finishing the season with momentum. Terminando la temporada con momentum. Well, that's it for this week. I'm back to England with my amigo, Filiberto Cachapollos. Adios, until next week. Cheers, Uri. Right then, Wickham Wanderers headed all the way to Carlisle United to take on the Cumbrians in what would be their final home game of the season in League One after having their relegation confirmed. Could Wickham continue their good form? Let's find out. Jack the Snack Grimmer joined us on commentary. Freddie Potts tries to thread it through to McCleary, but he doesn't, but he gets it back, opens up for goal, and he's just past the post, Freddie Potts, and he sits on the turf and slams his fist down there because he knows how close that was. He tried to thread it through to Gareth McCleary. The pass didn't find G-Mac, but Freddie Potts well had got the ball back, drove towards the edge of the area, hit it from 23 yards, just to the right of centre. The keeper scrambling, and it's just whistled past the post. Corner to be taken by Luke Leahy, left-footed in-swinger. Leahy now drifts it into the back post. Keeper scrambling, doesn't get there. And it's looked home by Gareth McCleary. No mistake from one yard out. The keeper scrambling from the excellent delivery by Luke Leahy. It fell kindly in the six-yard box. And with his left foot, Gareth McCleary pokes home his fifth goal of the season. The Peter Pan of Wickham Wanderers keeps doing it. Love it. The Benjamin Button strikes (laughs) again, honestly. McCleary now, dead centre in the Carlisle half, tries to give it back now to Dale Taylor, who gets away from McCalmont, uses Codger on the left, he sets it back to Leahy, Leahy puts a cross in for Kone, gets oh, across his man, oh, heads okay. it down and wide. Great run though from Kone. Kelly sets it back, it goes across the face of goal, drops to McCalmont, he scores! <laughs> McCalmont made no mistake there, Wickham Wall just left him unmarked. On the edge of the area, the danger came down the left-hand side initially. It was cut back, and Ravazzoli left with no chance there. And it's Carlisle 1, Wickham 1. Ball thrown into Kone, inside the area. Tries to wriggle his way through through three players, but they clear their lines. It's another throw to Wickham 1, just a bit further down the line now. Please tell me you tried some baklava. I did, at half several. And... Uh, Jealous eyes around the press box here. BBC Cumbria getting involved yeah. too. So uh, we've been sharing the world. Leahy tries to roll it to Dale Taylor. It's knocked clear, but McCleary chips it back in. Finds Taylor, spins and turns, corner of the six yard area. It's blocked. And it's back into the area. And Kone sniffing and oh, scores. Richard Kone tackles the ball in. And Carlisle United couldn't clear their lines. And Kone, when he sniffs the goal, 
He's like a rat up a drain pipe there, isn't he? Just wouldn't let it lie. And he's poked it home to give Wickham Wanderers the lead early on in his second half. Like a rat up a drain pipe. <laughs> Tremendous commentary there. You don't get that anywhere else before. <laughs> Carlisle won well, Wickham too. Great back heel by Kone. Releases sadly on the left-hand side. Kone's come short to the corner. They go back to Lee. He crosses into the back post. G-Mark. McCleary, yes. yes! Gareth McCleary with his second in the game. And he was so hungry for that one. The ball was hung in by Leahy. And Gareth McCleary heads the ball home emphatically past Harry Lewis. It's Carlisle 1, Wickham Wanderers 3. And the referee... Well done, boys. Bang on 97 minutes, blows his whistle and brings the season to a close at home for Carlisle United. And Wickham Wanderers have won this one 3-1. Jack, it was a, a really disciplined performance from Wickham. It was, I think... Um... You know, your man Ross Miller on Twitter alluded to, I think it is a bit similar to like the Shrewsbury game. Uh, you know, I think we've worked, we just, we've done enough, I felt, you know, against a, a team, I don't want to say a poor side, but a side that had lacked all belief, I think, you know, sadly with the way their season's gone. I think it's a performance that, you know, full of hard work and, you know, just the little bits of quality that we're used to from some of the front boys have seen us over the line, 3 1 win can't have too much complaints you know this season we're still churning out results and you know I think it shows that we are willing to still try and pick up points and then we're not going to let the season peter out right then we'll be back Tuesday night we'll leave you with the full time score here at Brunton Park Carlisle United 1 Wickham Wanderers 3 have a great weekend Gaffer a professional win 3 on the bounce on the road yeah, three on the bounce. Um, second time this year we've done three in a week, I think. And uh, first time we've done them all away from home. Obviously, the, with the rearranged game, there's been a lot, lots of, um, lots of travelling. Um, but the boys have been incredible in terms of their professionalism. Um, I was actually pretty angry at half-time. I, I, I didn't think we was at our, our best in the first half. And, you know, I, you know I've so, such high expectations of our performance level. Um, and I didn't feel we'd quite hit it in the first half. But... Um, second half, I thought we were we were very very good. Um, there's some real good individual performances within the team today, and absolutely delighted to pick up another three points. Lots of changes of late, and again today as well. Does that mean it, it can be difficult for rhythm? Yeah, absolutely. I think you've hit the nail on the head, mate. I think um, you know you know with this schedule we've had, um, we wanted to make sure you know when we play at our best, I believe that we're full of energy and um, pressing. Um, and we need to be able to, to, to try and repeat that as often as we possibly can. Um, so, you know, obviously we've had to keep making changes. And on the flip side of that, one of the, um, one of the possible negatives is that you don't find that correct rhythm all the time. Um, I think the manner of our performances remained fairly consistent, if I'm honest. Um, but obviously, um, you know, different personnel in each week. I think it was maybe another seven, seven changes today, of which that's been fairly constant um, over the last few games. But what it does enable us to do, mate, is to uh, really play with the energy we believe that when we're at our best. And, you know, as I saw yet again today, you know, when the finishes come on, we, we, uh, we can go again. So, um, yeah, there's, there's positives and negatives. But I have to say, um, the, the backroom staff have been working in, incredibly hard. Um, you know, Mike and, and Ben in the sports science department, uh, the guys in the medical department, and obviously the way we're trying to recover and, and prepare in each game. Um, yeah, absolutely delighted with our form of late. I don't know what the points per mile is, but it's, it's been a lot of miles, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, it's, it's high on the points per mile, but... Um, you know, I, I think in, in amongst the fatigue, I'd have forgot that it was three in a week. Franco reminded me at the end. It was just, you know, I'm so obsessed with our performance and the way we want to go about our business. So I'd forgotten that that was the third in the week. And, and Franco reminded me walking off. Um, you know, we, we, we're hungry for more success. We're hungry for more points. Um, we don't want the season to, to peter out, um, even though we don't have a, a, a playoff place or fight and relegation. We don't have that to play for, but we have what we believe we're, we're building. Our form since Christmas has been um, top six. Our form in the last 15 is top four. So, um, you know, again, our stats today, um, you know, in terms of XG, um, shots at goal, um, coming away from home and, and producing that performance we did, we've, we have to be pleased with that. Great momentum as well going into this stage of the season and momentum you'll want to carry through the summer. Yeah, too right. And, and that's been the message. Um, that was the message before, um, well, since Wembley. It's been, you know, the build-up to, to Wembley was that you know we were building up to a big game and we had to make sure our league form was right since then it was you know we want to build the momentum into the summer we we really believe we're onto something um that we're building something new and and, and special in our eyes um that takes time as you know um you know and, and, and we've got a huge amount of work to come because we're far from the finished product but um there's been some promising signs some some exciting signs and and we're excited to, to continue that forward Use the word energy, and there's a player that epitomises that. It's Gareth McCleary. That was a fantastic performance today. 
yeah, G Max um, he's defying logic in my eyes in terms of the um, output he's given us at the, at the um, um, senior ages in football terms. Um, that's just that's a fact. But what is also a fact is that he's defying all of that, um, and he plays with such energy. He plays with a real enthusiasm for the game. I've loved working with him since I've been back in the building, and I think you can see he's enjoying his football. Um, you know, we really hope we can we can keep him for longer because um, you know he's he's a player that um, really carries a threat for us at the top of the pitch. Um, he's a senior figure in the change room. People, you know, the lads really look up to him, and he carries a voice which I which I encourage. So, um, if you can still hear me uh, uh, over the top of the the uh, um, uh, the guys, then yeah, obviously we're really really pleased for for, for Gmac. I didn't know a Gareth McCleary header until today, but that's something to add to his locker as well. well if you look, he, he's been incredible for us recently, mate. He's been marking at set pieces. He's been we've been kicking to him in his side when um, I feel like he's really taken on a responsibility, uh, a responsible role within the changing room and on the pitch. If I feel like he's you know, making uh, the most of every moment he's got on the pitch because, um, you know, when you get to, you know, I've, I've lived that, that age, you have to, you have to enjoy um, what football there is because um, you're at that, that age. But he's, he's been incredible for us. I want him to stay. I want him to um, be a massive part of what we're doing going forward. Um, and uh, it's a great header out there, you know, uh, at the, in the end. Fantastic header. And we've got another away game, believe it or not, on <laughs> Tuesday night. Although Cambridge is going to fill up popping down the shops, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that one because it's, uh, it's only an hour 10 from home. So that's the one that we're encouraging that one. Um, yeah, so uh, another away game. Uh, again, inevitably, there will be changes. We took a couple of knocks today. Um, um, and we'll try and keep the consistency of performance. Um, Cambridge are a good team. Um, obviously, um, you know, had a... Had a good season, so um, we're looking for a, for a tough game on Tuesday night, or we're expecting a tough game. Um, um, so, yeah, it's going to be a, another tough one for us. We've got a long trip back tonight. We'll have to count the bodies, make sure the boys recover right, and, and look forward to Tuesday. And he must be looking forward to getting back to Adams Park next Saturday for what will bring the curtain down on this season. Yeah, it'll bring the curtain down on this season. It, it'll, it'll, it'll look towards JJ's 400th appearance for us as a football club. Um, I'm going to try not to use him in, on Tuesday as much as I possibly can because that's 399 now and he's been an incredible servant, um, incredible player and person for us. So um, it's only fitting that he makes his 400th appearance at Adams Park. So um, barring any, anything that happens on Tuesday night, I'm, I'm really hoping that that will be next Saturday at home. Um, to finish off the season and, and mark his 400th. So we're looking forward to that, but we want to go to Cambridge and, and play with the same um, intensity that we have done recently, and, and there's no reason why we can't. Gareth, a brace here at Brunton Park, and a special ground for you, right? Yes, it's, uh, I think it's going back 17 years now. I got my first uh, professional goal for Forest against Carlisle, so, yeah, it brings back a lot of memories. Uh, it was uh, a goal from a corner in the first half, right place, right time. You just know where to be. Yeah, um, on the keeper, and yeah, thankfully it, it bubbled down to me. I, if you see in the celebration, I think Joe Lowe put his hands on his head because I, I, I don't know if his header was going on target, but luckily I was there to just uh, prod it in. No need to ring the EFL for this one, though. No, definitely not. This is definitely mine. <laughs> and the second goal, we were scratching our head on the commentaries. Gareth McCleary headers. There's not been many of those, certainly for Wickham. Not been many. Um, I think it's my second. Um, yeah, it's just a great ball by Luke. Uh, I made my mind up to, to make sure I was in around the back post. And, uh, yeah, thankfully it came to me. And um, luckily I, I, I got my head on it first. And a great combination of you and Jason McCarthy on that right-hand side today. Lots of space and you really enjoyed yourself out there by the look of it. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of space. I think we were a bit, all, all of us were a bit sloppy in the, in the first half. Uh, obviously, going one and up, there was a few misplaced passes, myself included. But, um, yeah, second half we came out and we, we showed a lot of professionalism. Gaffer, Gaffer gave us a bit of a talking to at half-time, which we needed. But um, we came out second half and I think we done well. I've asked you this before. What's the secret, Gareth? Come on, you're, you're, in your, you're well into your 30s, but you're up and down that wing... Like someone a lot younger, they had to take their left back off in the second half. Um, yeah, t to be honest, I don't know. Um, I feel like I can keep going. I'm feeling really good. Gaffer's given me the platform to, to perform as well. Um, certain days, if I need a bit of a rest, he'll, he'll give it me. Um, but yeah, I've missed, I think I've missed two games this season. So don't know what it is, but long may it continue. Absolutely. And all these away games as well, it's been quite a, a, a gruelling schedule, but Wickham are putting the results out of all of this. Yeah, we spoke about, I think it's the third win in a week we've had, three games in a week. Um, so yeah, it's been fantastic. We've got a, another one coming up against Cambridge on Tuesday. Uh, we've set a, a target, we want to get back into the top 10, so hopefully we can win that and, then, and see, see it off in style next weekend against Charlton at home. The Gaffer and Gareth McCleary with their post-match thoughts backed by a chorus of lawnmowers. The Cumbrians have had a season to forget. 29 defeats in the league, 
is their worst in their history. So, what did the Carlisle United fans make of their defeat to Wickham Wanderers? It's time for the opposition view. John Coleman. The Coleman scored on his return, but otherwise, that was a dispiriting end to the worst home season in Carlisle United's history. It was also very much in tune with what we've been seeing for a long time now. Stu Ferg, 1990. Our keeper's Clart. Our defence is Clart. Our midfield's Clart and our forwards are Clart. I'll honestly be happy if I don't see another player from today in a Carlisle shirt at Bruton Park ever again. Lewis. So I wonder where that second Wickham goal ranks amongst the worst we've ever conceded. Munchy magic. What a load of orlicks that was. Their first goal was from a mistake by us, whereas our goal were nicely created and executed. <laughs> but we didn't bother turning up in the second half. I don't think we even had a shot. Worst of all, Wickham hardly broke sweat and were nearly above average themselves. The sort of team we would be beating had we been half decent. Oh, 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 oh. and a boot needs putting right through that drum in the Wickham end. What a din! Piglet Phoenix. That was quite an interesting game from a tactical perspective. Wickham's passing game versus our <laughs> kick and rush long ball approach. I don't reckon even our players know how we managed to create the opportunity for McCalmont to score. It was all a bit out of the blue. We need to immediately defer plans for ground improvement and the training complex and concentrate on fixing the football team as a priority instead. CK... I always try to find the positives, but I'm struggling today. Not one player was any less bad than the rest. No one even gave a 4 out of 10 performance. It was absolutely abject. Players who made a promising start when signed, they seem to have dropped off alarmingly. I'm really worried about next season. I think we should change the manager. C-U-F-C James. Simpson and the whole team should hang their heads in shame. What a shocking rubbish and effortless game. Then they all walk round at the end pretending to be sorry when the reality is they can't wait to leave in the summer. Poor Chester. So much support for Simpson at the end of the game. It's frightening. They'll still be clapping as we tumble into National League North. Lemon Detector. Paul Simpson enjoys godlike status amongst the fan base. They proudly identify as simpletons, such as their dedication to the man who once managed Lancashire Giants Preston North End and the biggest club in all of Shropshire, Shrewsbury Town. Night Prowler. Just think, we'd get European football if we joined the Scottish League. Carlisle City Football Club. We hope the one Wickham fan who turned up at our ground found his way safely to Carlisle United. <laughs> It's till death us do part. It's all about your love for the football club because your football club is like a marriage. You choose one and they're yours for life. Uh, the, through the good times and the bad times and those mid-table times of your marriage too. They're really important. Uh, and to go through uh, their footballing memories of Wickham Wanderers is Wickham Wanderers fan Johnny King. Johnny, how are you? I'm very well, thanks, Phil. How are you doing? Very well indeed. Just back from Carlisle. So, uh, you know, the... That's a long journey, but, you know, it was worth it in the end. So it was all good. Yeah, I was very impressed. Um, living down in Plymouth, I absolutely refused to go to Carlisle. So um, I have to take my hat off to everyone who, who did go. And uh, I'm glad you all got back eventually. 
Uh, so you're down in Plymouth, so you're uh, yeah, also known as the Wanderers TV Southwest correspondent as well. We should have given you your full title at the start. Um, so you're in Plymouth, uh, which I'd imagine is quite stressful at the best of times. Uh, so why Wick and Wanderers? How did that happen? Uh, well, if we're talking about it in terms of a relationship, then not so much love at first sight as she was a cheap date, I suppose, because um, <laughs> I, I grew up in High Wycombe and um, I, I wish the club still did this, that when, when they used to do the Quidder Kid. Um, so if yep. you're under 16, I think it was, you got in for a pound. And um, I went along to a game with the lad who lived down my street. And I, I remember it was, so that would have been about 1997 and we beat Blackpool 1-0. Keith Scott scored the winner. Um, but I didn't sort of, and it wasn't like I instantly became a massive Wickham fan from that, but that was kind of my first experience and that sowed the seed. And and after that, I kept, I kept an eye on their results and stuff like that. But I didn't start going until regularly until sort of towards the end of 1999. Um, I went to secondary school and met my friend Matt, who I, you've had him on the podcast a couple of times. He's doing his FA Cup ah, challenge. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he's a you know lifelong chair boy, so I started tagging along with him. Um, and, and and the more regularly I, w I went, the more I got into it. And then I bought a season ticket the following summer. And it was very good timing because this, the season that followed that was the FA Cup run. Um, so it was very handy having a season ticket that season when as uh, as the as we went through the rounds and it got more and more difficult to get tickets. And yeah, very, very naive 15, 16 year old me thought, oh this is great. Like so this happens all the time, right? And <laughs> yeah, obviously the years since then I've I've got a bit more uh, understanding of the harsh realities of life. But yeah, it, it's always brilliant that when you first start watching your team for the first time, it's so exciting. And now you, you're a fan in exile because you're in Plymouth. So uh, how's that? Um, upsetting. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, obviously yeah. Living in living in Plymouth is distressing enough, but obviously being far far away from Wickham as well, it's tough. And don't get to as many games as I used to, sadly. Um, but uh, go go when I can. And Southwest away days are always uh, very important to me. But um, yeah, I'm here for another couple of years. I'm looking forward to kind of moving a bit closer to civilization in the years to come because I, I, I do miss do miss getting to games on a more regular basis. And people may also be familiar with your work as the editor of the of the fanzine as well, uh, which is an excellent read. So you also produce that from afar too. So that's uh, you are very committed to this relationship, Johnny. <laughs> well, yeah, it, I, mean, I think it's quite important to me, especially now that I live further away. I want to try and stay involved as much as I possibly can. So um, if I can't get to many games, I want to find other ways I can stay stay involved with the club and, and uh, you know, sort of donate a bit of my time in any way I can. I've got a fairly limited skill set, but, uh, yeah, what I can do to help, I absolutely will. And yeah, I've really enjoyed doing the fanzine sort of at least 40% of the time. It's great. <laughs> chasing up articles i'd imagine and uh, about three minutes before you hit print or something i'd imagine that's what it's about right being an editor yeah it, it it's fine like it, it comes out four times a year so when it's when i'm not actually doing it everything's fine it's when i actually have to do some work and it's the obligatory um staying up all night the night before you go to print to actually um get it all done um that, that's a bit stressful so um but everything else is great <laughs> summer right, months is brilliant <laughs> yeah we're all, we're all looking forward to the summer months i'm i'm absolutely shattered so i'm looking forward to a little break too uh right let's get stuck into the pizza then we start with something old which is your favorite ever wickham wanderers memory this could be anything yeah i had, I had to think about this because i think the two standout ones for me are the fa cup run um specifically the fifth round replay at wimbledon and also torquay but i know they've been mentioned quite a bit so i was trying to think of something a bit different one one thing i would say about torquay um is uh, a little personal memory is there was two great escapes that day because um i was living in portsmouth at the time and i was traveling back on the train um in my wickham shirt big sort of sat in a smiley coma very happy about life and i suddenly realized our train had pulled into bristol temple meads um <laughs> and i very quickly pulled my hoodie on and zipped it up just as a bunch of very angry, very drunk Bristol Rovers fans piled into the carriage. So that, <laughs> uh, it's good job I was paying attention because that could have um, that could have gone very badly. Um, so yeah, I, the one I've gone for, and I'm pretty confident no one else is going to pick this. Um, it's the 2012 Barks and Bucks Senior Cup Final. Excellent. 
Uh, oh, it was a rubbish game. Really boring. Nil nil. Um, Wickham won on penalties against Cheshire United. But the reason I've picked it is because it's so far the only time I've seen Wickham win a trophy in the flesh. Um, because by by this point I've been supporting Wickham sort of about twelve or so years. Yeah. And it was I was starting to it's starting to dawn on me that I might never see them win a trophy. Um but then I thought, well, if nothing else, we've got the Bucks and Bucks Senior Cup, we're you know, we're gonna win that, it, surely. Um and I travelled up from Portsmouth for the twenty ten final, which we subsequently lost. Um we won it the following year, but I couldn't go. So I started <laughs> to get a bit cursed. Um <laughs> but then we yeah, we got we got drawn against Chesham in the final. It was held at Adams Park, I travelled up from Portsmouth again. Um, and uh, yeah, it wasn't wasn't a great game, but we won on penalties, so I finally got to kind of tick that one off my bucket list to see if we can win a trophy. Fantastic! Well, I think this is the first Burks and Bucks entry in this in this part of the of the feature, which is excellent. Uh, so yeah, Chesham on penalties. Could you remember who scored the winning penalty that day? That's a great question. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember this very well, so I wasn't sure if it was sort of. Oh, we got to. It was a bit like the sort of the football league trophy where we get to the final and then all the big guns come out. Or, <laughs> well, no, we played. So it was just before. I think it was just before we shut down the youth academy. So I think it was all youth team players who played. Okay. Um, Matt Ingram was in goal and he was he was superb and he saved a few penalties in the final uh, in the shootout. Um, the two it's... players I remember, um, apart from Ingram, was there was a. A, a little sort of pocket-sized midfielder who was very lucky to get away with just a yellow card in the second half. He sort of deposited his opposite number in the first few rows of the Frank Adams stand. Are you sure that wasn't Josh Schoen? It was Josh Schoen. It was the first time I'd ever seen him play. I'm <laughs> saying to Matt and saying, I like him. Um, and uh, the other one was, uh, I don't want to be mean, there was this kind of like slightly rotund kid jogging up and down the touchline in a tracksuit and I thought he was a ball boy. And then... Towards the end of the game, he took his tracksuit off. He had a full Wickham kit underneath. I turned to Max, they're bringing on the ball boy. Um, anyway, that was Junior Marias. Um, <laughs> and to be fair to him, he came on and he kind of, as much as you can, light up a nil-nil draw against Chesham. He kind of lit that up a bit and he he had a a good touch on him and a surprising sort of burst of pace. I think he hit the bar as well. Um, he scored his punt in the shootout. I remember that. Um but yeah, I remember predicting at the time that he was going to be a bit of a cult hero for Wickham fans, which, considering he never scored for us, I think he did a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Well, great memories. And also, you know, a, a good shout for the Burks and Bucks Cup too. Uh, let's move on to something new. Your favourite player in the current squad? I had to have a real good think about this because my favourite player was always Bloomfield from pretty much the time he arrived. Um and I never had to think about it because he then stuck around for the next 46 years. And when he retired, he I think he left a bit of a power vacuum that no one filled. And I had to so I had to think about who my favourite player is now. And I was kind of half tempted to say, well, it's still Matt Bloomfield, but I feel like that's a bit unbecoming to say the manager's your favourite player. Like you know, the kid at school who said his best friend was the teacher. You, no yeah, one was yeah. He's best, not so. he's not gonna pick you, Johnny. He's not gonna pick you. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. You never know, but probably not. Um, I've got the same body type as Junior Rice, so you never know. Like, you could do, man. Uh, it's never too <laughs> um, no, the, well, there's two players who popped in my mind. So, I mean, I will give a quick honourable mention to Max just because, purely because he's a bit strange and he likes dogs, which is essentially all I look for in a person. Um, that's how I choose <laughs> life. Like, a bit weird, but kind to schnauzers. <clears throat> like, that, that's me sold. Um, but if I had to pick one, it's tough because I like all of them. Genuinely like all of them, but I'd probably go for Luke Leahy. Um, mm -hmm. He seems like a really good character, but um, I'm slightly biased as well because I'm part of a group who are sponsoring him away. So I feel like I've got to pick him, otherwise I might be in trouble. <laughs> but I would say like I really like all – it's great that we've got this policy of signing good guys. Um and I, I probably wouldn't have cared about it when I was younger, but now I'm a bit older. It really means a lot to me that, you know, the players who walk in through the door, they're not just good players, they're good people. You know, Grimmer, JJ Scowen, Wheeler McCleary, all really, really good guys. And Jason McCarthy, terrible taste in music, but a really good guy. And I, I really like that about our club. 
If you've still not got over the Jason McCarthy lock and cold play, have you? Is it, if you've carried this for many years now, Johnny, I'll never get over it. It's gonna wherever he goes next, whatever club he signs for, it's, he's got he's got to live with that choice. Yeah, I always thought we should sign the striker Chris Martin, and maybe Jason McCarthy could strike up an excellent relationship with him. Yeah, I mean better than Chris Martin certainly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luke Leahy is uh, he's, he's, uh, he's not a shy man and he's quite into his situation comedy stuff you're a writer as well I could see something maybe down the line when Luke hangs up his boots in maybe 10 years time 15 years time and uh, he could then be looking for a, a qualified screenwriter to, to make him a star Johnny I think this is where you could step in yeah you should definitely think about yeah that, that, that'd be quite a nice niche I don't think there's many footballers turned comedians it's like John Bishop plays semi-pro, I think. But other than that, I don't think there's... Um, yeah, that'd be quite a nice sort of like niche market for him to try and corner the, the football yeah. and comedian. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah you need to... Well, Dennis Green of, of Wickham Wanderers uh, famously was told by Martin O'Neill it, it was football or comedy. Uh, and uh, the two were, uh, were often went hand in hand, actually. Uh, but he chose comedy, and the rest is history. Uh, but yeah, so th there is a well trodden path by a few Wiccan players down the years. But yeah, I think Luke Lee, he needs he needs material, mate. He needs a writer, so I can connect you two together. I'd love that. Yeah, I'd be very happy with that. <laughs> right then, on to something borrowed. Now, this could either be your favourite ever loanee or player that you wish we signed, but we never did. And this could be controversial if you need it to be. Um, well, I'll go mildly controversial. I, I think most people have picked low knees and it's the, the obvious ones that stand out, um, sort of probably Stephen Taylor, Alfie Mawson, um, Eze, and I think we've probably had Freddie Potts that list as well now. Um, but I'll go for a player I wish we'd signed because I did an article about this for the fanzine, I think at the start of this season, um, players who'd slipped through our fingers over the years. And there's one name that I think will haunt Wickham fans of our generation till our deathbeds, and that's the name of Fitzhall. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, he's a centre back at Chesham. I, I remember this. He was very publicly offered to Wickham. Uh, they were, Chesham were managed by Bob Dowie, who was Ian Dowie's brother. Um, and there, there's literally an article in the Buck Street Press where he was saying, Come and sign this guy, I won't stand in his way. And Laurie Sanchez, who uh, definitely did some good stuff, but maybe did some not so good stuff, and certainly wasn't the most. Uh, affable of gentlemen shall we say um he went and, and watched him and, and came out with the now infamous phrase that Hall was no better than we've already got which which wasn't true I mean that was the season we signed Carlos Lopez so I mean that just wasn't the case um but yeah so Dowie subsequently rung his brother who was managing Oldham um they signed him for something stupid like 20 or 30k had one brilliant season at Oldham and then spent the rest of his career playing in the top two divisions and playing for like Southampton and Palace and uh, Watford. And I think, you know, you know it's, um, Oldham sold him for like a six-figure fee and, and that could have been Wickham, but it wasn't because Sanchez thought Andy Thompson was a better centre-half. Bob Dowie, how much does Bob Howie not like his brother that he doesn't offer his brother the player first? He comes to Wickham first and goes, oh, they don't want him. I'll, I'll now ring my brother. <laughs> there must be a bit of je bit jealousy there, like that he never hit the highlights of playing for Luton and Northern Ireland. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Super maybe Bob Bible. Dowie got the good looks and, and Ian Dowie got the football skills. They're a gorgeous family. They they are. <laughs> uh Fitzhall, one of the best ever nicknames in football as well. Do you know this one? Oh yeah, one of his mates called him one size. Yeah, one size fits all. Fantastic. I mean you've got to love dressing room banter at its finest, I think that. Yeah, if if you never did anything else with your life but you came up for the one size fits all, then you're done. You've completed life. <laughs> it's almost yeah, it's like the three O Walcott of, of football, isn't it? It's like you've done that, then you've you've basically you've got need to do anything else. You never need to work again. Uh, I'm not sure what Fitzall does these days, but I always remember I met his sister weirdly when I was at BBC Three Counties, and she was fantastic. And the whole family came along, and uh, not Fitz, unfortunately, but uh, they seem to be absolutely wonderful people still in the area. So uh, yeah, maybe uh, we need to find him and find out what the potential cult hero could have been. Fitzall is up to. Maybe he's making clothes. I hope so, yeah. Or shoes, yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, fantastic. Right, we're on to something blue already. Uh, so this is uh, your idea for a piece of merchandise. And this feature has actually delivered stuff that is being made. 
as we speak uh, that will be available commercially in the club shop. So again, no pressure, John. Um, right. I have to, um, yeah, I was going to I was going to say some Jason McCarthy headphones, noise cancelling headphones in case you have to do a car journey with them. Um, I've, I've probably got um, a favourite piece of all time, and and a thing I think we should do um, if we if we've got time, because um, I've got very fond memories of the uh, Wanderers in Town club shop, the old one, um, which was. It was in it was in like sort of the furthest darkest corner of the octagon. Um, you only went down there if you were getting chased by a gang. Basically, it was yes, it was a rough yeah. location. Um, it was the sort of the back entrance to the bus station, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. A cleaning cupboard, I think, that they put some shirts in. <laughs> um, I used to love going in there when I was a kid. I used to get off my school bus. It was like an hour's walk home, but I used to get off at the bus station and go in there just so I had no money, but just so I could go in and. Just look at because merchandise as well back then was like the stuff you could get a Wickham badge on, like all like oven gloves and lampshades and Wickham flavored toothpaste and all sorts. It was, <laughs> it was a magical time. And I used to I used to just go there and the the two women who worked there, I think they were mother and daughter. They must have really hated me because I'd go in there, spend half an hour just looking at everything and touching things and moving things on the shelf, but then walk out without buying anything. Um, so oh, no. apologies if they're listening, but. Um, <laughs> There was one, I remember one thing I did buy, they, the club bought out um, these little sort of die-cast metal uh, Wickham plates with, with a few sort of the big players at the time. So it was like a Martin Taylor one, Jason Cousins, Keith Ryan, Dave Carroll. And I wanted a Steve Brown one because I really like Steve Brown. This is this was before Bloomfield. He was my favourite player because I mainly just liked his insane acts of violence on the pitch. Plus <laughs> goal against Colchester. Um they didn't have a Steve Brown one. They had a Jermaine McSporran one. And I hope this is all right. I, I bought a Jermaine McSporran one. And if you're listening, Jockey, I'm really sorry. I scratched off the 15 off the back and tipexed on a number 30. <laughs> but I had a, and, I, and I made a, recreated the Colchester goal with my Subutio figures. I made a little sort of diorama in my bedroom because um, I was a lonely child. Um, and that, yeah, that was that was probably a place in the bedroom for about four weeks. And then I lost it, I think. Oh. Uh, wow. But that, that was it. So your favourite piece of Wicker merchandise is a is a is a McSporran figurine that's been tipex edited, fantastic. Yeah, a bootleg brownie. Yeah. <laughs> what um, would be your idea? Your creative soul, Johnny. I was I was I was keen to get your ideas for a, a piece of Wicker merchandise that you know that could be flying off the shelves. Well, I, I definitely think we should genuinely think we should do this. I, someone might have mentioned it the other week, but um, I'll still go with it. Um, do you remember the old uh, Merlin? Premier League um, sticker albums you could yes. get in the yeah, yeah. In the you get a packet and like five of them were Steve Harkness. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just remember. There was, there was a lamppost outside my primary school that was just, everyone had put their spare Steve Harknesses on it. Like if, if a passerby come past, they'd have thought it was like, oh, Steve Harkness must have been hit by a car here. It's like someone had done a memorial. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think Wickham should do a, a sticker album, not not for the whole division. I don't care who plays left wing back for Carlisle, um, but um, yeah, just one of just all the Wickham players, the the ground, the badge, the kits, maybe the media team, the one of the club's premier fanzine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm 38 years old, and I'm telling you now, if Wickham brought out a sticker album, I would 100 percent get involved. I would I'd be all over that. And also. Um... If we had swaps, if say another club wanted to buy our training ground, then we could just turn up at their stadium and cover their stadium in uh, in stickers of people like Luke Lee, he Matt Butcher, uh, you know, etc. And then you know, and and then we'd be a perfect use. We wouldn't even need to use a lamppost, would we? Exactly. Yeah, and I've probably still got a couple of Steve Harknesses as well. To be honest, I can have them as well. <laughs> but yeah, and I, I like the idea as well. We could do swap shops at home games, so um, people could meet up and sort their stickers and. I can I can really picture myself wandering around the Veer Suite with a pint of rebellion going up to random kids I don't know asking them if they've got a shiny Jasper pattern. Um <laughs> you know, actually hearing that come out of my mouth. That, that's probably a good way to get a football ban in order, isn't it? So yeah, maybe not some sort of order. Oh, but yeah, I genuinely think the club should do that. A Wickham Wanderer sticker, because there could be like the current players, obviously, there could be like a, a sort of a retro range as well. You know, you could, yes. you know, you could swap a, you could swap a Bodger Horseman for a, for a Matt Butcher or, you know, I could see it all happening now. And then the shiny range, 
Uh, there could be like a 3D one of Gareth McCleary's sort of washboard abs. Um, that would be quite good. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. We, that was that came up actually in the original thing. It was the hologram sticker where if you hold it to the right, G Max got his shirt on. And then if you touch it to the left, then the uh, his shirt disappears. And then it, it, yeah. So it's the ultimate Gareth McCleary sticker. Yeah, I'd like that in, a, yeah. in my own way. I'd like that. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about this feature is obviously manufacturing costs and lead times just play no part in this whatsoever. It's just pure fantasy. So, uh, yeah, I'd imagine that's really easy to make that sort of thing. And we could probably get it in the shop by at least the end of next week. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask Hummel to do it because, you know, the stickers would all fall apart and stuff. And well, they'd send us a bunch of like Wigan players. But but yeah, if we could find someone who's got a printing press in their garden shed, it, we could probably do it for, a, I don't know, what, a tenner? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it would immediately become retro if Hummel were doing it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, well, Johnny, this has been excellent. Um, you know, we can't also get you on and and for the 87th time not mention your infamous typing error at Plymouth as well, which uh, I think has been aired on the gas room again this week as well. It's uh, it's just, it it's the thing that's never, never going to leave you, is it, Johnny? No, I've, I, was, I was genuinely, I was mortified at the time, but... I've learned to embrace it now, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I've learned that no matter what I do with my life, that is gonna, um, that is gonna follow me. Just my, just like Coldplay is gonna follow Jason McCarthy, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be followed by the O and I keys being too close together on a computer keyboard. Yeah, that Matt McClure thumping shot at Plymouth Argyle was uh, is something that would always be attached to. And Matt McClure's still playing, and when I see his name pop up, the first person I think of is you, Johnny. <laughs> Um, well, I'm I'm very flattered. <laughs> I, need, I need him to retire. <laughs> uh, do you do like a just sort of a one-off typo in every episode of the every edition of the fanzine, just as a sort of small tribute to yourself? I know it, it might seem like that. I just genuinely can't spell. Um, no, that, that that that's all genuine mistakes. I'm afraid, but uh, <laughs> I do I do I do check every time I write shot. I do check that very carefully. Very wise, very wise. Well, Johnny, thank you very much for your time today. It's been excellent to tip so through your Wickham Wanderers memories. And uh, I'm sure there's many, many, many more to come. And uh, you never know, Plymouth may get relegated still. So we may be, uh, you may get to see uh, your your heroes in your local club. I hope so, yeah. I'm, I'm keeping my evil eye on them and hoping they're going to slip through the trap door on the final day. Right, that's your lot for this week's show. Many thanks to Johnny for his time and a big well done to Wickham Wanderers fan Joseph Guntrip. You may remember he was on the podcast a month or two back. He's done it. He's done 10 consecutive marathons, finishing at London Marathon on Sunday. A fantastic effort. Look him up on Just Giving and donate to his charity because it has been a superhuman effort from our very own Joe Guntrip. Well done, mate. Right, we'll be back next week with news of the final day of the season's game against Charlton Athletic at Adams Park. In the meantime, come on you blues.